All right, all right. Welcome, everybody. We'll get started here in just a quick second or so. Um, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to the show Money Talks, where all we talk is money. And with that being said, uh, we're streaming live today on Facebook and Instagram. Shout out to the Facebook and Instagram listeners. Um, for those that are on IG and you want to check this out on Facebook, it's now on my page, Jeff Badu Dash Wealth Multiplier. Right, that's the page that we are doing the IG live stream. I'm sorry, Facebook live streams. So we'll be doing that on Jeff Badu Wealth Multiplier page. Hopefully everybody can hear me okay on Facebook, and then hopefully everybody can hear me okay on Instagram. So welcome, welcome everyone. It is a little past 7 p.m. Central. Um, so with that, welcome to the show Money Talks, where all we talk is money. And today I have a very, very important announcement. Uh, we'll be talking through the nine action steps, right? Nine action steps to take hold of infinite resources. The nine action steps to take hold of infinite resources. It is a new book that I um, have launched and released. So I encourage everybody to check that out. And with that being said, before we get into the topic of the nine action steps to take hold of infinite resources, let me go ahead and introduce who I am so that everybody um, knows. And then on top of that too, I'll go into the market report. So my name is Jeff Badu. I'm a parallel entrepreneur and a wealth multiplier. I'm the founder and CEO of Badu Enterprises LLC, which is a multinational conglomerate in the finance industry. And what we do is we provide a suite of financial services, including our marquee company, which is Badu Tax Services. And that's the firm that provides tax preparation, tax planning, and tax representation for individuals and businesses across all 50 states in the US. And we also have clients in over 25 countries at the moment. Then we have Badu Life and um, sorry Badu Investments LLC, which is our real estate investment company, and that's where we invest in rental properties, apartment buildings, mainly on the south side of Chicago, in efforts to restore traditionally underserved communities. We also have Badu Life and Health Solutions LLC, which is our life insurance company that provides life insurance products and solutions to individuals, families, and small businesses. All right, then we have the Badu Foundation that provides financial literacy education to the youth ages six to 18. And we teach them on topics such as budgeting, saving, investing, and then scholarships. My purpose in life is to inspire and support the super hungry to take hold of infinite resources in order to create an abundant lifestyle. All right, do wanna shout out to a few team members that I see joining us today. Shout out to Ms. Desi. Shout out to Desi. Um, put the um, party emoji. Shout out to Champ, Mr. Will uh, William Champ. Appreciate you for joining. And by the way, if you can do me a favor, three things, please. And then a bonus, right? Three things and then a bonus. Please like the video, right? Please give us a thumbs up. Share the video and also tag a friend or two so that they can listen with you as we're talking, right? So please like the video share the video and tag a friend or two so that they can listen with you. All right. And then for Facebook, we're now streaming on the Jeff Badu dash wealth multiplier page, right? Jeff Badu dash wealth multiplier page. And so if you're on Facebook right now and you see the live stream, please share it, right? Please share it with your, um, your friends, your loved ones. Um, I usually stream it on my regular Jeff Badu page on Facebook, but this time we're streaming it on Jeff Badu Dash Wealth Multiplier, right? So we're looking to gain more traction on that page and that's where we're looking to use as the main streaming for the, you know, basically for the Facebook Lives, all right? So if you see it, just please share it, right? Just share it, like, and share it if you can. That'll be great, greatly appreciated. That's on Facebook via Jeff Badu Dash Wealth Multiplier, right? Wealth Multiplier. Welcome, welcome everyone. See some more folks joining us on Facebook and Instagram. We're streaming live today from the home office. All right, nice and cozy. Beautiful weather in Chicago is in the 70s today. 70 degrees in Chicago. Can you imagine? Beautiful, beautiful weather. 
Um, it's, it's the nicest weather we've had all year this year in 2022 so far and hope that trend continues for many more days to come. All right. So today we're going to talk about the nine action steps to taking hold of infinite resources, All right? The nine action steps to taking hold of infinite resources. Before we get to that though, let's get into the market report. This report is as of March 18, 2022. So as of last Friday, Wall Street rebounded last week and joined its best weekly performance since November of 2020. The Nasdaq advanced more than 8% as tech shares climbed higher. The S&P 500, which is composed mainly of technology stocks, rose more than 6%, posting its first weekly gain in three weeks. The Federal Reserve's moderate 25 basis point interest rate hike, so the Federal Reserve did increase interest rates, um, coupled with the projection of future rate hikes this year, gave investors more clarity on the direction of monetary policy. With While inflation is showing no signs of slowing, the Russia-Ukraine war has impacted energy prices. The Russia-Ukraine war has impacted energy prices, tightened financial conditions, and moderated economic growth prospects aboard, right, abroad, all of which could lead to higher inflation and slower economic growth in the United States of America, land of the free, home of the brave. Investors will have to continue to monitor all of these factors and gauge in their impact on the market. All right, so a lot of things happened last week. Let's start with last Monday. Stocks fell last Monday to begin the week in the red for the second consecutive week. Last Tuesday, we saw stocks rally as crude oil prices continued to tumble. Right, so um, last Tuesday, basically stocks um, basically rallied. All right, last Wednesday, stocks continued to rally last Wednesday after the Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell suggested that the economy is very, very strong. The economy is very, very strong. So the stock market went up from there. Equities advanced for the third straight day last Thursday, led by the Russell 2000, which went up 1.7%, and then the Global Dow, which went up 1.4%. All right, last Friday was another solid day for stocks. Another solid day for stocks, which posted their fourth consecutive day of gain. So very, very good week last week. Probably the best week in the stock market all year so far this year. Great week in the stock market last week. Hope we continue the trend of that going. Um, and shout out to Barbara for joining us on Facebook. Hey, Barbara, if you don't mind, just let me know if you can hear me, please. On Facebook, we're doing a Facebook live stream on a different page now. So please let me know if you can hear me, um, Barbara. All right. So with that being said, um, last week, right? The stock market went up. The stock market went up, so that's a good sign. Interest rates also went up, um, but the fact that stock market went up and interest rates went up, that lets me know that things are things are happening. All right, thank you, Barbara. She says she can hear me on Facebook. Absolutely, that is, that is good. And if you don't mind liking and sharing the video, liking and sharing, and also tagging a friend or two to listen with you so that they can gain this information, that's always that's always going to help as well. All right, that applies to both Facebook and IG as well. All right, so, so far this year, Dow Jones is up 5.49%. The NASDAQ is up 8.18%. The S&P 500 is up 6.16%. The Russell 2000 is up 5.38%. The Global Dow is up 4.21%. And interest rates are now up 25 basis points, aka 0.25%. All right, so interest rates are not at 0% anymore. They are now at 0.25% as far as the federal funds target rate. Now, that's not the rate you're going to be paying on mortgages or anything like that. That's the rate that the Federal Reserve charges banks to borrow money. You know, they they used to be borrowing it at 0% interest. Can you imagine? 0% interest. Banks were making stupid amounts of cash because of that. But now since things have ramped up, now it's going to put some pressure on banks. Now you really have to know what you're doing, right? You can't just make money just lending money to people. You got to be a bit more competitive, basically. You got to know what you're doing. Um, So now they have to pay 0.25% or so to borrow money, right, from the Federal Reserve, which they pass that increase to the consumer, right, the the mortgage consumer. the person who's taking out a mortgage, the person who's taking out the car loan. So basically, they're always passing down the cost to you. 
So if you see that interest rates have gone up on your mortgage, it's because that interest rates have gone up on the banks to borrow the money to give you for the mortgage. All right. That's how banks make money of other people's money, by the way. And why shouldn't you? Let that be the question of the day. If banks make money off other people's money, why shouldn't you make money off other people's money? All right, just something to let, let us soak in for a little bit, and which we'll go into the topic for today, by the way. It's a very, very important point. So if, to look, what to look forward to this week? This week is a rather slow one for economic reports, as it sandwiched between last week, which included the Federal Reserve meeting and interest rate hike, and next week, which yields, a, which yields the latest GDP gross domestic product data Consumer spending and price information from the personal income and outlays report and the employment figures for March. All right, a lot of big things happening. All right, so if you're just joining us, welcome, welcome everyone to the show Money Talks, where all we talk is money. We're streaming live today from the Baju Tax Services studio, all right, aka the home office, all right? We've been in here for about six years now. And today we're going to talk about nine action steps to take hold of infinite resources all right welcome everyone for joining if you don't mind like the video share the video and tag a friend or two so that they can listen with you that applies to both facebook and instagram this is recorded so this will be posted on my igtv page and then also my facebook page and remember on facebook we're now streaming via jeff badu dash wealth multiplier page we're not streaming on my regular Facebook page anymore. We're streaming on the business page, Jeff Badu Dash Wealth Multiplier. So that's something new that we've implemented. Um, you know, it's more of a strategy. So for those who do not know, I did release a book. I haven't formally, 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 you know what I mean, formally announced it yet. But there is a new book on Amazon right now called The Super Hungry, The Super Hungry, Nine Action Steps to Take Hold of Infinite Resources. Once again, it's called The Super Hungry, Nine Action Steps to Take Hold of Infinite Resources. It is available right now on Amazon as an ebook. The physical book will come out soon for you to be able to order, right? It is available right now on Amazon um, for you to order. If you're on IG, it's the fifth link in my bio, the fifth link in my bio, just click it. If you're on Facebook, just search um, The Super Hungry, Nine action steps to take hold of infinite resources on Amazon, or just search my name, Jeff Badu, on Amazon, and it will be one of the books books that pops up. This is my fourth book, the fourth book that I've written. Um, first book that I wrote was The Legendary Asset: Six Reasons Why You Should Own Real Estate. Second book I wrote was Seven Figures: How to Become a Millionaire. Third book I wrote was this book right here, Infinite Expansion: How to Infinitely Expand Your Vision of Abundance. And then last but not least, which is the part two to this book, is called The Super Hungry, Nine Action Steps to Take Hold of Infinite Resources, which I dedicated to my business partner, brother, um, Mr. William Champion, who's the Chief Operating Officer of Badu Tax Services. The book is dedicated to him. Um, you can actually read the dedication for free on Amazon, but of course you have to purchase the book to read the entire book. Um, so today we're just going to go through a quick summary, right? Just a quick recap of what the book entails. It's basically the nine action steps to take hold of infinite resources. How is it that if I hand you a resource, how can you take hold of it? How can you grab onto it, claim it, right? And actually do something about it. If someone handed you $100, how can you claim it, grab onto it, do something about it and make something good out of it? That's basically what the book is all about. Yeah, shout out to Mr. Will, um, Champ Will, follow me. please follow him on IG, by the way. He put a heart, heart emoji, absolutely. So the super hungry, right? The super hungry, um, I wrote the book last year and it was just released um, a few weeks ago on Amazon. So you can catch it on Amazon. It's the fifth link in my bio. If you're on IG, the fifth link in my bio is called the super hungry book, all right? And on, on Facebook, all you got to do is go to Amazon.com right now, search the book's title, The Super Hungry, or you can search my name, Jeff Badu, and you can get the book. Um, it's right now available as an ebook, right? Ebook on the Kindle version. The physical version will come out very soon. 
It's going to come out in maybe about two weeks or so, give or take. And at that time, we're going to do a book launch where I'm going to basically talk more about the book, talk about the process of writing the book. We're going to do a full two hour book launch or so. And I will invite the champ himself um, to be present so that we can read the dedication to him and let him know why we made the dedication um, for him for the book. So we'll have something more formal. But today I felt the need to tell you guys about the nine action steps to take hold of infinite resources. As a wink or as a hint, part three is going to come out at some point in the near future. All right. This is the part two in the book in the infinite expansion series. Part one of the infinite expansion series is this book right here. It's called Infinite Expansion, How to Infinitely Expand Your Vision of Abundance. It is available on Amazon. It talks about the 12 steps to creating an abundant lifestyle. You can get that on Amazon. And then if you want the part two that just came out two weeks ago, it's called The Super Hungry, Nine Action Steps to Take Hold of Infant Resources. All right. I'm very happy that I was able to write this book. And I'm very excited for what it can do for the world. All right. We're going to do PR campaigns and, and everything like that. Right. So just um, just something to keep in mind. Barbara says that's the book that I got. Absolutely. Awesome stuff, Barbara. So the Super Hungry, the part two to the Infinite Expansion book. Let's talk about the nine action steps to take hold of infinite resources. Prerequisite, you've got to be a super hungry person to really get this information we're going to talk about today. As a matter of fact, if you're not internally motivated, if you're not somebody who's hungry, and I'm there to say super hungry, you should not read the book, The Super Hungry. Right? This is only for those who are hungry, who want something in life, who want to build a legacy, who want greatness in their lives, who want their, basically to build something that a thousand generations that come after them are going to remember them for. All right. Do something today that a thousand plus generations that come after you will benefit from. All right. For example, the Rockefellers, Michael Jackson, the list goes on and on. These folks who have passed away, they've gone to a new phase. They've gone to a new phase, but their legacy still lives on today and will continue to live on a thousand generations that come after them. You hear Gen Z, Gen Y, right? These are generations, right? These are generations. Um, shout out to Ocean Walk for buying a badge. Absolutely. I appreciate you, Ocean Walk. Ocean underscore Walk for buying a badge. All right. He bought a three-star badge. That is awesome. On IG, that is, I believe, the highest badge you can actually buy. So that's awesome. That is awesome. Thank you, Ocean underscore Walk. All right. Anybody can purchase a badge on IG, by the way. Um, but let's talk about the nine action steps to take hold of infinite resources. The champ says, very excited, legacy building book, without a doubt, without a doubt, legacy building book. This book will change lives. We have multimillionaires that have read this book 30, 40 times or so. And I know for a fact when they read part two, they will go from multimillionaires to billionaires, without a doubt. This, 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 these are the types of books that help you get to the next level, right? These are the types of books that help you take your mind from, let's say you're in scarcity mode and transition you to abundance, right? These are the types of books that it's it, it's gonna, in a way, allow your mind to go in a different realm, right? To, to go at a, at a better, at a faster, and at a you know more consistent pace. All right, so the nine action steps to taking hold of, nine action steps to take hold of infinite resources. Number one, humble yourself with a sense of urgency. Humble yourself with a sense of urgency. Think about it, what does that mean to you? Number one, humble yourself, right? As an individual, you've got to be humble. Now, I'm watching the, the show called Super Pump. Super Pump on Netflix. I'm sorry, Showtime. My apologies, Showtime. All right, Super Pump is the story about how Uber became this ginormous company. All the trials and tribulations they had to go through. Unfortunately, their founder, one of their founders at least, Mr. Travis, right? You call him Travis K, um, was kicked out the company. He was kicked out the company. 
Now, they haven't gotten to that part yet in Showtime, right? Not to spoil anything. They haven't gotten to that part yet in the series, right? I believe it's episode five or six right now. They haven't gotten to that part yet where Travis got kicked out of his own company. Everybody can Google the Uber story, by the way. You can read the entire thing. Um, but I believe one of the reasons why he got kicked out was because he had a very, very cocky slash arrogant attitude, right? He literally got kicked out of his own company, not only as a board member, but as the CEO of the company. This is a company he founded. And I can already tell what's going to happen. Now, one thing I respect about Travis is he's got guts. The man has guts. Like he will he will lay it out on the table. You know, he, he's the type of guy, he's no BS, he will lay it all out. But the problem with him is that his attitude is not humble. He doesn't have a humble personality. So to humble yourself is to say, number one, I'm thankful for what you've done for me. I'm thankful for what I've had, you know, what I have. I am always willing to go out and get more, but I'm at least thankful. And I'm not going to abuse my power by, you know, taking advantage of people or doing anything that will tarnish my reputation or the people that I am working with or talking to, right? So humble, right? When you think about the word humble, it's someone that, you know, in, in my opinion, right? And the book tells you all about this, by the way, it goes deeper into this discussion. To humble yourself is basically to to own up to your own responsibilities, number one, um, to have a cool, calm, and collected attitude when it comes to most things in life, and in general, to be grateful, to be grateful, to be appreciative of the things that you have, not to be complacent with what you have, but to use that as motivation to go out and get more, not at the expense of other people though, right? And that was the problem with Travis. But Travis is, he he just had that problem, right? This is a show on Showtime right now. It's called Super Pump, The Battle for Uber. Love the show. I mean, I'm so addicted to watching the show. Um, it, it, it really teaches you. It really teaches you how the CEOs, what they go through and how you what you can learn. The thing that I learned from them the most is what can I learn from their mistakes? What did Travis do wrong that I can do right as a CEO of a company, right? A multi-million dollar company right now. You know, what, what things can I do, right? How can I step in to help my team? How can I be a better leader? One thing I also respect about Travis is he stuck to his core values. The core values of a company are everything. You stick to your core values, right? And so that's what allowed Uber to grow into what it is today. Now, what does it mean to talk about a, a sense of urgency. Um, by the way, I think we got a comment. Signor um, says, fiction. No, this is not fiction stuff, right? This is all real stuff we're talking today. All right, so what does it mean to have a sense of urgency? It means that you are humbling yourself, but you know at the end of the day, you can't just sit back and relax and say, oh yeah, I've got it all, that's it, right? I've got it all and that's it. And I'm not going to take action to go out and achieve more. Humble yourself with quickness and <laughs> say, hey, I'm humble. I'm thankful. I'm grateful for what God has given me on this planet, but I need to go out and get more. I need to go out and hustle. It means you're not being complacent with your humbleness, right? There is anything in life. I learned in the Bible that no matter what it is you have in life, too much of something is never good for you. So being in a way too humble to the point where you're just laying back and watching things fly by you, that's not going to cut it in life, right? Always be humble, be thankful, be grateful, have a nice tone when you're talking to people. Don't sound arrogant. Don't sound cocky. Don't, don't do any of that. But when we talk about humble yourself with a sense of urgency, it means that what you do have, be grateful for it, but don't let that stop you from getting more. Right. And in the sense of infinite resources, when you do get the infinite resource, make sure you are urgently taking advantage of it. Thank God I have it right now. What will you do? What will you actually do with it? That's the next step. And you have to do it with quickness. 
Urgency means quickness, speed, right? It means you're acting. You know, you're immediately acting upon what it is that you've been given. So you do want to humble yourself whenever you've been given a resource. Say a thank you, say a prayer, whatever it is, right? Do some gratitude. Maybe you have a gratitude journal. But the moment you're done with that, go ahead and take advantage of that resource. Somebody gave you a book to read, say thank you for this book, but actually read it. That's what we mean when we say humble yourself with a sense of urgency. When someone gives you a resource, don't just say, oh, thank you, and that's it, right? So when we say humble in this sense, we're saying gratitude. Don't just say thank you, and that's it. Actually use the resource. If someone gave you access to a mentor and said, hey, you can talk to this person for one hour for free. It is on my tab. You need to say thank you to that person and you need to go speak to whoever they told you to go speak with for that hour. What in the world do you have to lose anyway? All right. Humble yourself with a sense of urgency, meaning when you get the resource, say thank you and act upon it. So that's step number one. Remember, this is all recapped in the new book that I have available on Amazon it's called The Super Hungry, right? So when we say urgency, by the way, the cover of the book has a lion on it that is roaring, right? That reminds me of William Champion, by the way, <laughs> every time every time I have a picture in my mind because he's super hungry. The guy is, he's unstoppable, right? He's a beast that is unleashed, basically, and he, he, he grabs on to resources in the best way humanly possible. I mean, he eats it up. He eats it up. You give him a book to read, boom, he'll read it within the next 24 hours or so, right? That's what we mean when we say sense of urgency. Act, right? Be quick with it. Act upon it. Remember, quick does not mean rush. Quick does not mean rush. Quick means you're taking action immediately, right? So that's basically um, step number one. Humble yourself with a sense of urgency. This is all available in the book on Amazon called The Super Hungry Nine Action Steps to Take Hold of Infinite Resources. Number two, know that anything is possible. Know that anything is possible. So when you get a resource, you in your mind have to say, you, you have to, this is where we step into the realm of abundance, right? This is where we have to get a little spiritual. And that in the Bible says, be fruitful, increase and multiply in numbers. Right, be fruitful, increase, and multiply in numbers. So, in a way, the Bible is kind of telling you to be abundant, think abundantly, don't think scarcely, don't think that this world has finite resources. We have infinite resources, and that's why the book is called The Super Hungry Nine Action Steps to Take Hold of Infinite Resource. The moment you limit the word infinite and say finite, don't even read the book. Right. Don't even read the book. Give it to somebody else. You've completely wasted your time. So this is very important. Step two is extremely critical. In order to unleash the word infinite, you need to know that anything is possible. Right. And that whatever the resource is, there's no end. There, there's no limit to what you can do from that. I'll give you an example. I started. And by the way, the book has a ton of examples in it. The book is actually bigger than this first book that I wrote. I was really shocked. This is a book about my purpose, my life story, and about the 12 steps to creating an abundant lifestyle. But somehow, some way, part two ended up becoming more pages than part one. I was really shocked because this is technically the, the introduction in a way to the other books that are coming in the series. All right. Um, but let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. I started watching Grant Cardone videos. For those who don't know Grant Cardone, he's a big time real estate investor. Um, he owns over a billion dollars worth of real estate. And I started watching his videos. It was in the, essentially, it was around Thanksgiving of 2019. This was like right after meeting my, my lovely wife, Miss Yvonne. This is Yvonne Badu, shout out to Yvonne. And you know, it, it was one Thanksgiving and I, I watched one of his videos. It wasn't my first Grant Cardone video. It was my first Grant Cardone real estate video. 
he, he, he basically releases free, 100% free videos, one hour videos on YouTube every Monday on the topic of real estate. Every Monday, search Grant Cardone, you'll find something on real estate. And God had blessed me with the resource. Remember, humble yourself and act with a sense of urgency, right? God had blessed me with a video. I was researching real estate and Grant Cardone came up and a video came up and said, how to buy real estate with little to no money down. It was an, a one hour video. And when I tell you that video changed my life forever, it changed my life forever for the better though. It is what allowed me to go from at the time, as of 2019, 2019, I had six units, six apartment buildings, six apartment rental units. As of 2022, we're now at 188, 188, three years later. Why? That one video changed my life forever. It let me know that anything is possible from watching that one video, that one video. Of course, I watched more videos ever since. He showed me the sites to look at for buying real estate. He showed me how to get the money for the down payment. He showed me the type of real estate I should be looking into. He showed me everything. Now, I later since signed up for more stuff because I was super hungry. I need more. Right. I've since watched over 500 hours worth of his videos on real estate because the motivation he gave me just from that one video was invaluable. Right. We're actually attending 10X Growth Conference. We're going to do a virtual this year. Um, shout out to the 10X Growth Con, 10X Growth Conference um, this upcoming weekend. So if you guys need something to go to to expand your mind, go to the 10X Growth Conference. It's only 97 bucks for a virtual ticket, very cheap, very inexpensive, Friday through Sunday. I was gonna go live this year, but unfortunately, um, tickets had sold out, um, you know, so basically decided to attend virtually. I will be live next next year. But basically, he that resource itself let me know that anything was possible, right? So the next year in 2020, we went ahead and bought you know, start off with a four unit and then some money came about. COVID-19 came about. I hate saying this, but thank God it happened because it released some extra money that was not available to me, the infinite resources. I humbled myself, said thank you, and acted with a sense of urgency, found some funding, went ahead and bought a 10 unit apartment building. So my next building after the four unit was a 10 unit. Then it wasn't, then it became an eight unit that year, and then went ahead and closed on a 25 unit, then a 31 unit, then a 39 unit, and very soon a 55 unit. 188 units, right, that we were able to acquire. And, and it all really started, number one, it starts with your mind. Your mind has to tell you, hey, I wanna go out and, and do it. And then the video just inspired and motivated me to want more, to do more. So know that anything is possible when, you, when you're when you researching, when you're looking at a resource, step into the realm of abundance. Don't let scarcity shack, like put a chain around you and think that what the, what the article, what the video, what you're listening to is saying is not like possible. Put your mind in a realm of abundance and think it's possible. Remember today we're talking about the nine action steps to take hold of infinite resources. Part of taking hold of an infinite resource is knowing that anything is possible. Remember, this is all discussed in the book, Nine, um, The Super Hungry, Nine Action Steps to Take Hold of Infinite Resources. Encourage everybody to check it out. If you're on IG, it is the fifth link in my bio, fifth link in my bio. And then if you're on Facebook, just go to amazon.com and search The Super Hungry, or you can search my name, Jeff Badu. Um, it is the fourth book that I've written. And it is the part two to this book, Infinite Expansion, How to Infinitely Expand Your Vision of Abundance. By the way, if you haven't read this book, um, you should not read the Super Hungry book before you read this book right here. Just put it out there. As good as the Super Hungry book is, you do not, I repeat, you do not want to read the Super Hungry book until you've read this book that is in my hands right now. 
It is available as an ebook and it's also available as a physical book. By the way, when we get sales on these books, we donate it all to the Badu Foundation. Right? We don't even the, any money that's made from the books goes straight to the foundation. It goes into our scholarship fund, and we fund the kids' college education that are in the Badu Foundation. Right? It's just a project that we're looking to do. Um, the kids in the Badu Foundation, as a requirement to get the scholarship, they've got to read these types of books. Right, they've got to read the books. We do book reviews. We do a book club. We do all that stuff, so they can't get away um, by not reading the book if they want to be eligible for the scholarship that we have to offer in the Badu Foundation program. It is a non-negotiable. All right. Shout out to Trucker Lady uh, Shanice. Um, looks like you bought a badge. Thank you for buying a badge, Trucker Lady. Shout out to you. All right. So that's step number two. Know that infant. Know that anything is possible. Number three, value learning with a super hungry appetite. Value learning with a super hungry appetite. Value learning with a super hungry appetite. Does this mean you need to go to college? No. It means you need to put a, a, a value. You need to put value on learning, right? You need to truly value learning. If you do not value learning, then number one, you shouldn't be reading this book. Number two, it's going to be very hard to do anything successfully in life, right? When you value learning, you, number one, you're willing to pay for it. Number two is that whatever you're learning, you're soaking it up, you're meditating over it, you're allowing it to get into your brain and into your system. And when you have a super hungry appetite, you're doing it at a rapid pace. For example, I usually read 30 books a year, and these are typically personal finance books, self-development books. And, you know, one reason I do that is because I value learning. I value new information. I value education. Sometimes I read just for re-emphasis of existing information. And the fact that I'm able to do 30 books a year allows me to have a super hungry appetite. I can't stop learning, right? I'm on Grant Cardone videos all day, basically. Right. I'm, I'm like, you know, I learned so much that I've probably spent over 10,000 hours learning over the past five years alone. And that's being very conservative. 10,000 hours learning. Right. 10,000 hours learning. I'm not talking, you know, doing like working with clients or time that I'm spending even teaching. I'm talking time that I'm spending learning myself. Right. That's not even the time I spent writing this book. I'm talking just learning 10,000 hours over the past, right? Over the past five years alone. And there's some statistics in the book, by the way. I share with you exactly how many books I read a year. I compare it to the average person. And then I let you know that, hey, based on this calculation, how is it that someone who's doing bare minimum going to achieve X amount or going to achieve X goal by doing bare minimum. I literally put it, I lay it all out there. I pour my heart and soul into the book, right? So after reading that book, you have absolutely no excuses to do something great in life. No excuses to not do, basically to not do something great in life. All right, but value learning with a super hungry appetite. Value learning with a super hungry appetite. Number four is access specific information from the right resource. Oh man, this is critical. Access specific information from the right resource. What do I mean by this? It's real simple. When you're going on Google, instead of searching how to start a business, be more specific. How to start a hair salon business. Be even more specific. How to start a hair salon business in Chicago. How to get a hair salon license, right? Be specific in your search. Nowadays, keyword searches are everything. This applies to YouTube. This applies to Google. When you're looking for a mentor, don't just say, oh yeah, I'm just looking for a mentor. What type of mentor are you looking for? What do, they, what do you want them to specialize in, right? How often do you want to meet with them? Just think about all of these things. By the way, don't let money be the thing that holds you back from your dreams, let me repeat that one more time. Don't let money be the reason or the thing that holds you back from your dreams. 
Sometimes you have to pay to play. Sometimes you just have to pay to play. I'll give you an example. I just paid or I just agreed to paying $20,000 today just to be part of a big event that I know is going to generate me probably conservatively $200,000 over the next two years, right? So sometimes you have to pay. Now, do you need to start that way where you're, you're investing these large sums of money? Absolutely not. A lot of the stuff I'm telling you today is 100% free. That Grant Cardone video I'm telling you about is still out there right now. You can watch it yourself, right? How to invest in real estate with little to no money down. Grant Cardone. Free, 100%. It costs you nothing, but maybe an hour or so of your time. All right? So access specific information from the right resources. Look in the right place. The book shares some very, very specific steps to doing this. And so, you know, the book is even a research, right? It's how to research, basically. Um, there's some specific steps in the book as well. Number five, research your field in depth with strategic focus. So this kind of goes back to step number four, right? But when, when we what we mean by this is research your field, whatever it is you're looking to do. When I say your field, I mean the thing that you're looking to achieve. It can be real estate. Um, you want to buy a building. So research your field in depth. Do in-depth research, right? It could be you want to start a, you know, a nursing business. You want to start a retail business. So do research, but have strategic focus. Have strategic focus, right? Put some strategy behind your research. Where am I going to research? What time am I going to research? What do I consider relevant information? What do I consider irrelevant information? What will I do once I do this research? Am I just going to do it, the research and just do it? Or am I actually going to take notes and do it? Right. So that's number five. Number six, expand your research in the right direction infinitely. So don't just look at one source, but how can you expand upon that source into perhaps other sources? Are there specific things that the first source said to look into so that you can be more in depth? Right. Be thorough, basically, is 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 here. Now, we're not saying analysis paralysis when you're when you're stuck on certain information. That's not what we're saying. We're just saying spend time when I was working, when I was developing body tax services, um, basically back in college, I was spending one hour a day minimum. I made it a goal, a, you know, a task, a commit to spend at least one hour a day, one hour a day researching about my industry, the tax industry. Right. So there were sources, articles, videos that say, hey, refer to this source. Or talk to this person. So this step is simply saying, go and go ahead and actually talk to that that person, right? Infinitely. Number seven, master your craft with 10x more effort. Shout out to Grant Cardone, Mr. 10x himself. Master your craft with 10 times 10x more effort. You've got to want it. Real simple. You've got to want it. I shouldn't want it more. I shouldn't want it. You know, better than you do, basically. Me talking to you as your wealth advisor, as your coach, whatever it is, I should not be the one wanting something that I know you want more than you do, right? So basically what this is saying is give it some time. I know we're busy. Some of us got kids. Some of us got responsibilities. Some of us got to go watch a movie. Some of us got to go watch Netflix. Some of us got to go eat after this. Some of us have to go watch a video. Some of us have to put the kid to bed. Some of us have to do something. Can you please dedicate some time to whatever it is you're looking to do to avoid the excuse of, I don't have time. We all got time. I got time, right? I got time. You have time too. So master your craft, whatever you need to do. It could be reading books. It can be um, shadowing people. It can be maybe going back to school for a certain degree. So just want it badly. Want it like, what does this really mean to you? Sit, sit down and really think. What is it? What is it that this thing that I want? Like this thing that I want, what does it really mean to me? Why do I want it so bad? 
And you might have to come up with 200 reasons why you want it so bad. As a matter of fact, if you don't have 200 reasons, at least 200 reasons why you want something, that kind of scares me a little bit. If you cannot come up with at least 200 reasons on why you want something, then you don't want it bad enough. It's that simple. You just don't want it bad enough. If you cannot come up with at least 200, and I mean 200 reasons, on why you want something, you don't want it bad enough. So what you can do, and the book talks about this, by the way, you can come up with 200 reasons on why your craft is so important to you. And if you cannot come up with 200 reasons, you need to find a different craft. It's real simple. Right? This book does not mess around. It does not play any games. It does not say, oh yeah, we're going to cakewalk you to success or freedom. No. It's saying you got to put in the grunt work. You got to put in the sweat equity. You need to put in the labor, the time to get the things you want. And it will pay off for you tremendously, a thousandfold in the long run. Because remember, we're doing this today for even a thousand plus generations that come after us. So master your craft with 10 times more effort. Number eight, take advantage, full advantage of the abundant amount and ultimate and of ultimate resources available to you. Take full advantage of the abundant amount and of ultimate resources available to you. Yes, you. This one is pretty self-explanatory, but... In a nutshell, when you find a resource, take full advantage of it. If you find a video that's really good, maybe you might watch it, have to watch it five times, right? You just might have to do that. And I, you, usually that video is going to point you to another resource, another video, another site, something else, right? So take full advantage of that resource to get you to where you need to be. Number nine, believe that you can tap into your God-given potential in a big, massive, and impactful way. Believe that you can tap into your God-given potential in a big, massive, and impactful way. Seeing is believing. Believing is achieving. Seeing is believing. Believing is achieving. So you need to believe in yourself. Not only do you have to want it, Number one, not only do you have to want it, but you have to believe that it's going to happen. You want to become a multimillionaire? You have to believe it's going to happen. You want to own a Rolls Royce Phantom one day? You've got to believe that owning this Rolls Royce is going to happen. Yes, I do have vision board items that are physical items that allow me to see the things that I want. And there's nothing wrong with owning one of these, by the way. Right, this is one of the most expensive cars that is out there in the world, right? So you, you, in your mind, you have to think, do I really want this? Do I want this? Or your own plane, right? Do you really want this? Now, it's not all about the material things in life. Trust me. It's not all about that. What I'm saying here is you've put down on paper in 2022, you want to buy a nice car. Well, what will you do, number one, to get it? And number two, will you tap into your God-given potential to get it? Let's put it in more practical terms. You want to start a, you know, a, a practice, a medical practice, right? Will you tap into your God-given potential? Do you believe that you can tap into your God-given potential in a big, massive, and impactful way? Right? Will this impact a lot of people? Is this big enough? Is it like is it is it worth anything to you? Does it mean anything to you? So this is where you have to tap into the spirit a bit. You might have to pray, you might have to meditate, you might have to read the Bible, you might have to do something that gets you into the spiritual realm so that you can see what's possible. It should be no shocker that we have multi millionaires that have read books like this 40 times. I kid you not. We have a testimony of a multimillionaire who has read this book 40 times and is probably on the verge of becoming a billionaire. And when he reads the super hungry book, there's no telling where he can go from there. Right? So 
you really, really have to make sure that you want it. That's the thing. It's called the super hungry. <clears throat> Nine action steps to take hold of infinite resources. The book is available on Amazon right now. If you're on IG, click the fifth link, link number five in my bio. It says the super hungry book. Click on that. It takes you to the book and you can purchase it directly on Amazon. Remember, all proceeds go to the Badu Foundation, right? All proceeds go to the Badu Foundation. Um, so remember, it's always up to you. Success, your own success is always up to you. I don't control it. I don't define it. It's always up to you. I'm just here to help guide you in the right direction. And books like this will allow you to go in the right direction. If you need any help from me, just please let me know, or my team, just let me know. My website is jeffbadu.com, J-E-F-F-B-A-D-U.com, jeffbadu.com. With that being said, hope you all enjoyed this, um, this segment today. Nine action steps to take hold of infinite resources. The book is available on Amazon as an ebook, and it will be available as a physical book very, very soon. With that being said, my name is Jeff Badu, and I look forward to continuously and consistently delivering you all some content. Thank you.